So for this video, I'll be working through the discussion. Um, I also wrote up um, a bit of a sort of a practice internal to align with the experiment that I did. Um, I called it time to drain the reservoir. I set the context um, as, I'll show you actually. I set the context, context as um, the Wellington City Council wants to know how long it would take to drain a reservoir. Um, yada, yada, yada. You can read it. I've posted the link for this in the description. Um, I've just got the diagram, the physics theory with the uh, formulas involved in the different uh, variables. On the next page we have the aim, um, to find the relationship between the time it takes the tank to empty um, and the height dropped which is just the initial minus the final which will give you the distance. Um, and here's the different types of orifices or just holes in the, in the bottle or the tank. Um, general instructions here you can have a look anyway and I've attached a really really crude mark schedule um, this is just really really general um, it basically just covers all the points in the uh, achievement standard outline which can be seen on the front here so they basically just cover all of these I've sort of already written on uh, on my one here um, and I've edited it a little bit because I've made a few mistakes as you do when you make them up as you go right so We'll start off, I'll just go through all the all the uh, things to tick off. So I've collected data relevant to the aim, I've done that, I've determined the uncertainty in the raw data, we did that, using graphical analysis, including uncertainties, we did that, provide a conclusion that states or equation of the relationship slash value of the physics quantity as determined from the graph and includes comparison with the physics theory, we just did that right here um, by comparing the theoretical gradient and the theoretical intercept to the uh, actual gradient and the actual intercept and we also did that um, in the previous video um, so the next one is describing the control of other variables that could have significantly affected the results so I'm just going to pause the video now um, write up a paragraph and then we'll discuss so what I've said is uh, a variable I controlled was how I measured the height of the water I was careful to measure the water from the bottom of the meniscus and kept my eye parallel to the water surface. If I had measured from the top of the, menis of the meniscus, this wouldn't have affected the shape of the graph, brackets gradient, only the y-intercept as, and this is meant to be hf, um, would have been measured as being less than it was. So it's basically, you know, when you measure water, especially with the water in that water bottle, um, it was going up the sides quite a bit, so you have to measure it at the bottom of the meniscus um, not at the top, otherwise you'd be over measuring it every single time. Um, right, so I'll write up another one and then I'll discuss. So another variable I controlled was having the same person release the water and record the time. This meant coordination times would have been faster than having a separate person release the water and another record the time. This isn't the best variable controlled and I was obviously the only person doing it and when you do this when you do this internal generally speaking you're the only one that records results but I added it in there just because I don't know it's a small wee thing that you can tack on right so we have described the control of a variable that could that could have significantly affected the results we did that clearly with the first one because if we didn't measure it correctly that would have changed our gradient we said that Use techniques to improve accuracy of me measurements. We said that by measuring parallel um, and measuring the bottom of the meniscus and also um, having the same person that increase the uh, that increase the accuracy. That's that one ticked. Um, determine uncertainties in one of the variables expressed in the graphical analysis um, with the uncertainty in the data. We did that. that was, that's back with the graphs. Provide a conclusion that makes a quantitative comparison between the physics theory and the relationship quantity obtained from the data, from the experimental data, which includes consideration of uncertainties. So we sort of did that over there. Uh, oh, can we see that? We sort of did that up here, um, but I'm going to do it a little more detailed uh, later on. So we'll get to that. Right, so the next one is excellence. Other variables that could have changed and significantly affected the results and how they could have changed the results. So I'm going to pause the video and write up a big paragraph on the uh, the whole design and how that could have changed the results. 
So I've said one variable that could have significantly affected the results was the orifice, and that's, that's the hole type. Given the thickness of the bottle, it was difficult to determine whether the hole was sharp edged with a coefficient of 0.61 rounded, a coefficient of 0.98, or a variant of the short tubed uh, with a coefficient of 0. 8. And we can see that here if you just look on the if you look on the PDF where we have the uh, orifice types, we have quite a variation in the uh, coefficient. But if you look at the shapes, it was really really hard to tell with the bottle what shape it really was. I was thinking it was more sharp edged, just because of the way I put the uh, the red hot um, drill bit in, or screwdriver, what do you want to call it? Um, but it was quite difficult to tell because the, the wall of the bottle was so thin. Um, so I have said, or a variant of the short tubed then with the C of 0 0.8. This introduces an uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.2 because the maximum is basically 1 and the minimum is basically 0 0.6. Um, SF, or your uncertainties always have to be to 1 SF, that's just the general rule. Um, so complete range of 0.4 covers from 0.61 to basically 1. Um, uh, so the max is 240, which which was our gradient, but at the minimum gradient value is 146. Um, this minimum value for our gradient, for the gradient, uh, M equals 146, is outside our gradient uncertainty, which suggests the predictive valid validity of our model is not strong. So that, if we go back to our achievement outline criteria, um, that covers the limitation of the theory's applicability um, in both the practical and or the extreme values, or that that's more the the applicability of the um, of the situation. And I will go on to to do that as well. Um, there's no real unexpected outcomes. Maybe that one there could count as it, uh, but it, that definitely counts the variable that could have changed it significantly affected the results because that would have really thrown them out if the uh, C value wasn't what it is. So I'll pause the video and just do a final write-up of the uh, limitations to the theory's practical applicability um, and just some of these side notes on it. So I've said with regard to the practical applicability of the theory, if the type of orifice, so it's the hole, can be determined with high accuracy, then reasonably accurate predictions can be made. And I've just sketched up, that's the rough relationship, where the, uh, where the time was proportional to the square root of the height. That was our non-linear graph. Um, one thing to note is that after a certain height, the time it takes for the tank to empty is roughly the same. So in times of earthquake risk, the reservoir can be kept full without having to worry about much extra time needed to empty. And I just did a few back of the envelope calculations. If you have a diameter of 80 metres, so if you go back to the, uh, to the context, the context was how long it was going to take one of these fellows to empty out. I just sort of guesstimated 80 metres across is probably roughly what it would be. Um, a diameter of the of the hole with a pipe um, of 0.4 metres, that's you know a bit bigger than the size of an A4 page, which is a decent sized pipe, which is, seems about fair enough. Um, and I plugged it into the equation. So for five, if you have the this tank, uh, the water level at five metres, you're getting 3.75 days to empty. At 10 metres, 5.3. At 15, 6.5. And at 20 metres, 7.5. So if you add you know, an extra quarter, if, you, if the thing is completely full at 20, if it's three quarters full, it only takes one less day. So you're better off just having the whole thing completely full. Right, so I'll just we'll double check we've answered everything. We'll go to actually our answer sheet and we'll just whiz through just to see what we've done there. So independent variable for, so for the merit, five values plus appropriate range and steps. Yeah, we did that. Um, dependent variable, variable values are measured, acceptable and accurate. Um, I did you know multiple measurements. Um, control variable, we did all that. Accuracy improving techniques, that was the meniscus one. Raw data transformed, we did that. Uncertainties in the data, we had that for both, but we only plotted the, uh, what did we only plot? We only plotted the uncertainty in the height because the time was too small to plot. Um, straight line graph, we did that. Best fit line, yep, yeah, we did that. Um, error line, we did that. We had the uh, 
the steepest. Yeah, we had the steepest, the line of steepest foot. Gradient calculation, we did all that. Gradient uncertainty, um, we did that. And we found our relationship with appropriate uncertainties. That was plus or minus 40. Um, and discussion. So we've evaluated the results. We've considered the relevant physics theory, sort of, shows critical thinking where it's sort of hard to judge.